<laughs> Sorry, is the live in new hybrid models is a little complex. Um, so just saying, um, some references, if you wanna have a look at them. Uh, again, these are like a lot of videos and a lot of references. If you want to spend some time uh, having a look at them, but don't try to watch them all, it's a lot of information. Um, and that's that. Okay, um, so to make sense a little bit of what we're gonna talk about, uh, let me go back to this class index. And we already know more or less some concepts of um, electronics, resistance, voltage, uh, electricity in general. Uh, what are microcontrollers? What are programmers? We talked about this in Embedded Pro and Electronics Production Week. We also know how to design PCBs. We already know how to use KiCad. We know some electronic components. And now we're gonna start programming things. So today with Guillem, we saw an introduction, a very large and broad introduction to digital electronics. And the idea now is that we're gonna talk a little bit of what actually we're gonna put inside those <coughs> electronics in terms of coding, what we called uh, during the pre-course uh, on MDEV, but in general, uh, from ideas to code, how do we materialize programs? And as well, Tomorrow, um, well, today we're gonna make use of a lot of um, concepts from the Arduino framework. These libraries that Guillaume was talking about that help us uh, materialize some code in an easy way. Tomorrow we will strip all that and we will just use it, we use C++ to program all these things. Okay, so tomorrow will be a little bit more advanced than today. Uh, today I just want you to uh, get an idea of how can we make a code uh, based on ideas that we have, okay? So I guess that you, well, let's start. I guess that you remember this uh, image probably some weeks ago we talked about this and also in the pre-course. Um, what we're trying to do here is talking about these uh, high level programming uh, languages in, in green. These are like object oriented program, uh, scripts or languages, visual languages, then some more low level ones, but still that we can write as humans. There's something in the middle, if we go down the pyramid um, into the connection to the hardware, so what the chip actually understands, that is called assembly, that is a little more, more hardcore and not many people use it anymore. And what we call machine language, that is what they actually, what we put into these transistors or into memory so that they make the operations we was talking about. We're not gonna touch any of that, but we're gonna go to the first box in here that we will talk about Arduino, C++, etc. And tomorrow we'll just take a little step into the second level, but that you'll see that things start getting complex and um, um, and make things not that, not not so easy. Um, so first things first. Um, before trying to materialize or to try to write some lines of code, I want you to um, remember this idea of an algorithm and uh, how we can represent that using a flowchart. Okay. So our the code that we're going to write on our electronics uh, or on our microcontroller has a certain purpose. And that is something that we're going to have to think about before, before we start writing the first uh, functions or before the, we write the first variables. That's what it actually does conceptually is called an algorithm. And an algorithm is a, se a sequence of instructions that take care of a certain task. We might be wanting to control the temperature of uh, this uh, main hall, we want to detect when someone walks into the door, we might want to do many things. And the steps that we take into fulfilling that task is what we call an algorithm. I think it's very useful for, for us to use this um, flowchart representation of an algorithm. And um, we 
we're gonna do one hour self right now. I'm just gonna take this as an example. And I'm gonna walk you through it in case uh, this is not like obvious. But let's say here the algorithm we're trying to uh, represent is something, is like I want to find an object. And what are the steps that I need to take? I start, I look for an loss for the for the my item. When we do flowcharts, we represent actions in uh, a square. Then if I find, uh, once I'm looking for it, if I, f uh, I ask myself a question, uh, did I find it? And when I ask myself a question, uh, I put it in uh, this rhomboid. Either yes or no. If I found it, I stop looking. If I didn't find it yet, uh, I ask myself again, do I need it? If I need it, then I come back, I keep looking, and if I don't need it, then I stop. Okay, super simple, it's even a little bit silly. But now I want to do with you the same exercise, but to control, for instance, um, what do you want? The temperature of this main room using these uh, heaters here and a temperature sensor. Okay, so, Let's do it. Uh, and I want you to tell me the instructions that I have to follow. So I'm just gonna put this as start. Can you see my screen uh, well? Is it big enough? Yeah, right? So I press start and our task is control temperature of IAC main hall. Okay. So you tell me what do I do after I start and what should, what should I do? I have a sensor, temperature sensor, and I have all these heaters here. Sorry? What is the current temperature? Okay, so it means that I have to uh, measure temperature, no? Okay. And then what do I do? I couldn't hear anything, sorry. I got you. <laughs> I don't know if this even works. Could you speak louder? I, it doesn't work. What do I need for for this? Do you think that we should set, I don't know, like um, let's say temperature set point, what do you like it to be? 23 degrees? Okay. So what do I do? I know that I want this temperature. I measure it. Sorry? Okay. So what do I do? Do I put uh, one, one of these blocks, for instance? Yeah. And what do I say here? Okay, so let's say temperature. So here, what do I do? Switch off heaters. 
Okay. And once I'm done with that, what should I do? Wait, I'm going to do this. I'm going to put end. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Okay, so if I switch off heaters, what, what should I do? Uh, I measure the temperature again. Uh, okay, first concept here, I think, I think it's totally right. But what I'm going to do is actually assume this because I didn't tell you something, but this goes back here. So as soon as we end, we start again, okay? We could, we could do that as well, or we could, for instance, uh, say another action that, for instance, waits, no? So do you think that I should uh, do that instantaneously or should we wait? Okay. Wait for how long? Wait 60 seconds, okay. And then I connect it here. Yeah. Okay, so now, what if, so this means that the temperature is above. So I switch off the heaters, I wait 60 seconds, and I measure again. What happens if the temperature is below? I switch on the heaters, okay. Do you think that we have to ask ourselves if the heaters are on or off? Already or not? Do we have to ask ourselves is if the heaters are on already or it doesn't matter? You want to see how, how build, okay. Okay, so what do I do? Do you want me to? Okay, so I put this in here maybe. And I say, temperature lower than temperature minus two. Yeah. So if that's the case, I switch on. You are designing this, I'm just uh, following orders. Okay, so this is a yes. What do I do if this is a no? What should I do? Mm -hmm. We have uh, we have heaters, no? So sorry, I, I, is it so? If I have a heater and the temperature is low, larger than the uh, my set point. I don't want to keep heating, right? So I turn this off. Is that right or? Ah, okay. Good, sorry. So if it's a no, okay. So let me then do this. Yeah, this is okay. So if it's larger, you're right. So if it's larger, I switch them off. If it's lower, 
then I ask me, I ask again, it's lower than minus two. If yes, then I, I switch it on. And then what do I do? We wait, I wait. So I, I, I'm here. Yeah, so I, I go here, okay. And then here, in case that is not, what do I do? I wait again, okay. Okay. Okay, good enough. So here, if it's now, I wait, and then I end, and then I come back, right? So first thing here is that we have this concept of loop. Let me make this a little bit bigger, in which we are constantly taking measurements and deciding uh, upon what the result is and what our conditions are, right? So we are looping here constantly over and over again. We also have some variables here before. Let's say we could call these like that, some variables set up some variables like that, that basically define the fact that we have a set point and that's it, okay? Let's imagine now that I want to make your lives a little harder and I'm very concerned about fuel consumption. So, or the butane that we have in these uh, tanks, and that I only want to turn this on whenever there's someone in the room. And imagine that I have a sensor that can detect if there's people here, and I only want to turn on the heaters in case there's someone, okay? So in that case, how would you modify this, uh, this chart? What would you do? Okay, so I need to check, let's see, uh, sense people, let's just say that, and imagine that it gives me if there's someone or not in the room, right? And where, sh where should I do this? At the top, so I put it in here after the start. Okay. So I put it in here. Let me just move this a little bit up here. Um, oh. Up here. So I sense if there's people and then what do I do? Okay. Is there people in the room? Okay. This is getting a little long now. So I sense people in the room. If there is someone, what do I do? So then I measure temperature. If not, you switch off. I switch off. No, Let's just assume that if they are off and I turn them off, it, nothing happens. Like they are off already. It might, it's like a switch. If something is, the lights are off and I say, turn off the lights, they're already off, that's okay. Yeah? 
So I switch it off. Yeah. Okay. So right now we have our little first algorithm to check how can I control temperature in IF call with our heaters only when there's people. Let's check what it does. So I start, I sense people. Is there anyone in the room? I switch off the heat, wait 60 seconds and I finish. If there's someone, I measure the temperature, I check if the temperature set point is uh, lower or not. If it's lower, so if I am above the set point, then I switch off the heaters and I wait 60 seconds and then I go back. If not, mm -hmm. if not, I check if we are below T set point minus two so that we don't oscillate around the temperature set point. If we are below, I switch it on, wait 60 seconds and come back. Yeah, good. So we could make this come more and more and more complex. Imagining for instance that I want IAC to be hot or warm enough already before we get here at 10 so that we don't have to heat up until 10.30, let's say, and then we are suffering here for two, three hours because it's a very big space. And we could do that with a little bit more intelligence. But for now, we're gonna leave it like this, okay? You wanted to say something? I mean, if there's no people, if like sense people is after start, wouldn't it make sense for sense people to be somewhere where you don't need to stay in the loop if there's no people? Because right now you switch off and then you wait and then you end and then you start again and then you set. Okay, so you want me to put it uh, here, for instance? No. Or in to end? No, no, I think it's valid point. Yeah, yeah. Like I, didn't, I don't know if it's a parallel like command that's taking place. Like if you sense people, you start the process, the, the, the heaters are off, you know? Uh -huh. So what we could do, for instance, something like this, I sense someone, I, if I, as soon as I send someone, I start the process, but I don't have to switch off and wait. Yeah. I think that's a good idea, yeah. Okay. So here, as you have seen, we need some basic things before we set up our script, which is some variables, some uh, initial uh, concepts that we're gonna store somewhere in the memory on our microcontroller, that is, for instance, the temperature that we need. We also need some sensors. We need some inputs, some outputs uh, to actuate as well. Uh, we need to control a little bit how this is gonna work uh, with asking ourselves questions and materialize them into the code. And we also have this concept of loop. Probably Guillaume didn't uh, uh, express this that much, but basically when we program something, any microcontroller is gonna be running the script that we put in it forever, and unless that there's no power, of course. And it's gonna do that loop as fast as it can. Endlessly, and it start over and over again. So when you finish on one spot, you'll start on the next one, okay? So with this in mind, let's try to put this into actual code. And for this, this is the Arduino IDE. Um, you can see some similarities already here. First of all, what we call setup. Probably this is uh, a lot of people that have seen this already is really a basic introduction, but uh, be with me. There will be some, some surprises along the way. So we have the setup. Setup is something that we only need to run once in our code and basically means we're gonna, we're preparing things, okay? And then we have what the loop. These two instructions here, are common to every Arduino script. And basically, uh, 
are, are marking the structure of, of all the codes that we, that we run. This is, and we will see tomorrow, the same thing as doing uh, an endless loop in here and just leaving like that, this like this, okay? So I, if I did this, Yeah. Yes, I'll, I'll show how to do it, yeah. Um, do you agree with me? Uh, I'll answer to this question in a second. Do you agree with me that this is also um, the same structure? He, these are comments, uh, this, doesn't, uh, this doesn't count. So I have an infinite loop that stays there forever. And then some instructions that I run um, only once. And then as soon as I enter the loop, I stay there. Do you agree with me that this is the same or not? No, I'm sorry, it's just the, just the structure here. Okay. If you wanna see this, um, if you go to preferences, I recommend that you set up your Arduino ID like this, display like numbers, um, enable code, code folding, and as well, um, this one, so verbose output during compilation and upload. This one here, display like numbers and enable code folding, it will be helpful, okay? So let's try to materialize this in somewhat pseudo code and put it into Arduino. So first of all, I'm gonna introduce some uh, variables, let's say temperature set point equal 23, 23. This means that uh, this is the type of the variable that we are gonna declare. Uh, if at some point you don't have uh, a clear idea of what a variable is, it's basically something that we can change within the code. And each of these things inside the code can have different types. In this case, int represents an integer, which is a number that doesn't have comma, okay? Float is another type, which is a number that would be something like 23 point like that with, a, with some zeros. And bool is a boolean, which is a variable that on, can only take one or zero, only those. And you can define other types, uh, but those are the ones, the, the most important ones for now, okay? So now I have my temperature set point. And imagine that I here I have my sensors and that I want to initialize. So I'm just gonna put this for a moment in it, in it sensors. And then I go into my loop. Okay. So in here we could start putting some of this instruction to the left. And I want you to help me with with that especially if someone has already some idea uh, about Arduino. So what should I put in, even if it's pseudo code? Um, here, for instance, what I could do is uh, the first step sends people. And imagine that I have a function that sends people And it would be something like imagine that I have a function that is able to tell me if there's someone in the room or not. Okay. What should can you help me into transposing from here on the left to the Arduino code? Uh, 
Okay, so it gives me a variable that is a Boolean, you say? Okay. Okay, so do you think I need a variable for that uh, before or not? Okay, so if I put this, it's more or less clear. Here, um, wait, I want to do this. If there is someone, then measure. Do you think, so if, just remember that when I'm in line eight and I start going down to line nine, etc. if I go to this line, line 10, and I send someone, I go inside of this. And if not, and then I go to here, and then I go here, and then I go back again to the beginning. Is this the same of what we are doing in here or not? Yeah, this is if you imagine the loop as always repeating, when we finish in here, then we go back again up, to, up here, right? So I only need that. This is the first, like this is the what we call uh, control structures, and it's called if. If basically evaluates this, what you put in parentheses. So it goes something like, if you go into the class, evaluates a condition between parentheses and it has to be either true or false or something that is not a zero and it does something. If that condition is not okay, so normally we signify that by else, then we do something else. So we can decide on two things. If something happens, then I do something. If something that, if that something doesn't happen, then I do something else, okay? So in this case, I'm doing, my condition is the response of a function. We could put as well this a little bit easier if, for instance, uh, people in the room is there people in the room? That's fake. Uh, this could or not could be fake. Actually, I don't think, I don't see why this wouldn't work if we define the function properly, yeah. Okay. And this function or this variable is a Boolean. So I have this Boolean here, that is my condition, the same as in here. And then when there's someone, I do this. This else part here is not compulsory. I don't have to put it. So if I don't put it, I just finish and then I go back up, okay? This function here, we'll see how to declare it, but basically will return something. It's just something that we can implement ourselves or not that will tell us and will return a variable whether or not there's someone in the room. And for that, for now, we can just keep it like that, okay? Then, please interrupt me if you are confused or, yeah. In Arduino, you need to declare the variable, all, all the variable types, yeah. Yeah, uh, either you can declare it in the loop, and that means that you're declaring it every time and it's only in the loop, or you could make what we call a global variable that would be here. No, you don't have to. You could leave it like this if you want. So you could do this. If you want to, what we call initialize the variable, or you can just leave it like that. And in that case, it would just be a variable that is undeclared. So it is declared, but it doesn't have a value yet. 
and we don't know. And then in that case, I don't need to declare it in here and it will uh, work in that here. Of course, I, I wouldn't ask you to put variables so long with such long names. If it was me, I would put something like PR, I don't know, people in the room, but this way also is more explanatory. Yeah. A while. For? But why? What for? Exactly. So if I am here, let's let's think through how how this would go. No, I get inside in the in this loop that I know that is basically always run, like when it gets to the end of the loop, it goes back to the beginning. Right? It's the same as the while loop. Let's say. If there's someone in the room, then I do everything that we're gonna put in here that we didn't put it yet. When I come back, when I finish in here, then I go back and check again. It's the same as if you if you wanted to do while is there people in the room. and then I do something else. It would be, yeah. It could be, it depends on how we on how we write that actually. Uh, but yeah, in principle, it, it could be. But in, in a while loop, you end up in the risk of always getting a stack in there if it doesn't work the way you expect. But that's my only my only comment. Okay. So now, uh, imagine that I have a function that is able to return the temperature of the room. Okay. And I'm gonna be here. And I'm gonna say measure temperature. Um, do you think that I have to do that? I have to put someone something else here. Maybe I should put it in a variable. Maybe not. What type of where should I put that variable and where should I what type should it be? Yeah, so I'm measuring the temperature here, which is this action that I have on the, on the, oops, on this side, right? Uh, let me just fix this, sorry. I don't know what is going on. So I'm measuring this temperature. Do I need to put that measurement into a variable? to be able to compare it to the set point or not? Yeah, okay. So where do I put that variable? At the beginning? Okay, so I say something like, um, do you like an integer? A float, okay. So float is, we can consider that our sensor can give us values that are for instance 23.5, 23.6, 23.78. These things. So, how do I call that template that variable? T T is good for me, and I don't need to initialize it. I can just leave it like that. Okay. And this is the temperature on the sensor. Okay. So. I, do you agree that this would work? Yeah. 
Yeah, so if I wanted to, so I am assuming that this uh, function returns a value, uh, a value that is a float. Once we, we will see this, but if we were to declare this function, we would do this. And here we interact with the sensor. Here I know that the function gives me back a float. This is the name of the function. And this is what it actually does. Okay. Then um, here I also have the arguments of the function. Imagine that I wanted to uh, check, I have several sensors and I want to read the, sensor, the temperature of one of them. So I say sensor, uh, sensor number. This is an argument that I can send to the function. But in this case, I only, I only have one sensor. So I only measure one, the only one, and I don't have to send any, any argument. It's, a, it's the same way as if I told you, uh, uh, Clement, please uh, close the door. If I told you this, you would ask me which door. Maybe, no, I don't know. So I have to tell you which door I'm asking you to close. Okay, so that the door that you want, I want you to close is an argument. And in that case, you could tell me, okay, I already closed it. So that message is what you are telling me. Okay, good, the door is closed. And we could represent that as a Boolean, right? Or for instance, I could tell you, um, give me money. And you say, how much money? That's an argument. And then you return and you give me, and you say, okay, I give, I give you this money, for instance, right? The same way. So this is the way that you define a function, uh, return something, the name of the function and the arguments, and here inside the actions that you take. And after that, you give back uh, the value with, um, if I'm not wrong, with our return and uh, sensor reading. Okay. And this sensor reading, it at some point, uh, is read from the actual sensor and is returned to me inside and doing operations to interact with the physical sensors and corrections and, not, and calculations, etc. So there's a lot of happening, a lot of things happening inside of here. But let's imagine that now we have the temperature and we want to take action based on, on what we wrote in here. So what should I do? We are in this point right now. We already measured temperature, so I now want to do something with it. Okay, if T larger than So like this, or what should I do? Or this here? This one, no? That's the purpose of defining the variable so that I don't have to change it twice, no? So I do that, then if it's larger, what should I do? Switch off the heaters. So here, imagine that I have another function that is uh, switch heaters off, okay? And then I, sh I should wait. So in Arduino, the way that you wait is with delay that basically stops the execution of the microcontroller and just waits and does nothing, nothing else, okay? 60 seconds, uh, Arduino counts in milliseconds, so it's 60,000. 
This means that I'm switching the the heaters and then I'm waiting for 60 seconds. What happens if the temperature set point is larger? Is it, sorry, if, yeah, if the set point is larger, so we are below 23. Do I switch it on or should I check something else? Anyone? Maybe another if. Actually, it's the same as in here, no? Temperature, temperature set point minus two. And then what do I do? Switch heaters on. And then delay. Okay. Do we need this as well? What happens if the temperature is lower than, so, so if the temperature is between the set point and the set point minus two? Delay, yeah. Okay. So this would be it. Do you like it or not? I have a couple of comments. So we are always waiting no matter what, right? We take a measurement and if there is someone in the room, we always wait. So we're putting delay here three times. What happens if I put it here? Is this the same? Yeah. yeah. And I can delete this even. Do you agree with me that this is the same as before? Yes or no? Yeah, okay. So. What happens if uh, the temperature is between uh, T set point and T set point minus two. Mm -hmm. Did we write that or no? It's already... So in, the, in that case, it's what we had in here, like it was else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the delay. So in that case, we don't have to specify it, but we're basically waiting okay. because we always wait and we didn't take any extra action. We just wait. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we are missing a couple of functions the sense people function and the measurement, uh, the, uh, measure temperature function. So this could be a Boolean. The returns um, people or not. Here I do something about it. For instance, I interact with my people measurement sensor. And here we interact with the temperature sensor. So I'm not saying that this will work. It won't actually control the temperature in here. Uh, we also need this. So we could do two functions that are switch heaters off and the same for on. Do you think we could simplify that somehow? Only one function? And uh, how would you call that function? So do you, if I leave it like this, um, just switch heater uh, with an argument, okay. 
and I will call this like bool status uh, or iter status, for instance, which means that I, I am asking if I want the heater to be on or to be off. So here I could say if heater status equal true, or well, desired heater status, right? Then I, for instance, this could be a relay that turns on these things. So it could be uh, relay on for heaters. If not, relay off for heaters. Okay. Something like that, do you agree with it? This is just a, a comment. In here, we would actually have to put commands that we will put in a second, before in four minutes. I could do that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then the loop will be cleaner, but in practical sense, it would be, it would make the same effect, I think. Okay. So in three minutes, let's do one thing. And is, okay. We have, um, let me see how can I, I'm gonna copy this somewhere else so that you can see the whole structure, but it's basically the same. This is our first code in Arduino, which basically has some parts in which we define some variables. These variables can have certain types, could be integers, float, booleans, etc., and that will define what that variable, variable can hold. Variables are things that can change during this Uh, you are muted. 
for the last few minutes. Hey, wait, wait a second, this is Santi, so we're having some problems now, I think so Oscar is back. Okay, sorry. So, um, please let me know if at home uh, there was a glitch here. Um, so these three conditions or these three uh, structures, the while, the if, and the for, for does it for a certain amount of iterations, the if just evaluates a condition and does something or does something else, and the while does something forever until the condition is not met, okay? Uh, now, what we're going to do is very quickly um, try to interact with these uh, pins in the microcontroller in our setup and in our uh, functions, and we're going to call it for today. So, oh no, here. I'm going to do this. Yeah. So right now I told you that we're going to switch a heater uh, on or off, but we actually didn't do anything. Our microcontroller is going to be able to um, also interact with the outer world through the legs of the microcontroller. And we'll see tomorrow how we can do this with C++ and everything. But today uh, we're going to stick to the Arduino framework. So first of all, what we have to do is define how those microcontroller, so how those legs or those pins are going to be. The pins have a number. And um, for instance, imagine that I have pin number six. I have to define if it's an input or an output. So if I want, for instance, the heater relay. Sorry? Yeah, is that because Arduino uh, Quit unexpectedly. Uh, I can I can come back. Is it because it is the same? Is this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, get, let me put it back. I don't know. It, it closed. Yeah. I just do that. Let's do it in here. So. First of all, I need to define if one of the pins of the microcontroller, which are <laughs> with, uh, which are these little pads in here, and that they have a number, each of them, whether or not they are an input or an output. This is uh, one of the ESP32s that we have over here that have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and that MDEV has been using, but you will find what we call a pin out or a description of each of the pins for the microcontroller you're using. In Arduino, you have these things written on top and specify which number of the pin it is. So here you have the number of the pin and you say, I want pin number uh, six, which is not here. Uh, let's say pin number five. I want pin number five to be an input. 
sorry, an output. I just say, I say like that, okay? And that way I know that pin number five, I'm gonna be able to control something and that I'm gonna control, in this case, a relay. A relay is a switch that we can control uh, programmatically or electronically. We turn that pin on and the relay will turn on. If we turn it off, the relay will turn off, okay? Then I'm gonna say, uh, imagine that my temperature sensor was an analog sensor. So I'm gonna say temperature and I'm gonna, and that I have it in the pin uh, number 14. And I'm gonna say it's an input, okay? Finally, I'm also say, gonna say that I have a people sensor that is also Nothing happened, nothing happened. <laughs> well, um, let's say that I have my people sensor here in pin number eight, okay? So, very simply, if I go into our function, now I know that my pin for uh, the heaters is number five. Actually, I could do this a little better if I say in pin heaters equal five. I just do it like that. That way I say here a function that comes with the Arduino framework that is digital right, the name of the pin, and then I say, hi. That way I turn the heater on. If I want to turn them off, I just say, low. That's it. Now we are controlling heaters. The same thing for the other two. I'm gonna give you the function for an analog sensor which we have in, in temp 14. So I'm here and I could say digital, sorry. Analog read and in temperature. Analog read is gonna read the input of an analog sensor through one of the ADCs that we already talked about, an analog to digital converter. Also, it might be that this, is, this needs a correction, so we might need to multiply by two and divide it by 18 because there's a calibration of the sensor or something like this, but we can just ignore that. And for now, we can just leave it like this. So this is reading analog uh, pin and returning it. And finally, let's say, let's imagine that we have a sensor that is a people sensor that is on pin number eight. And that is also a digital sensor. Let's just imagine this. There's no such sensor here, but let's imagine that that I can put in here and I say people or not equal digital read and then in there, okay? So that sensor basically turns, is connected to one pin and whenever it detects someone in this room sets the pin high, whenever there's no one in the room, it's low, okay? I couldn't, I... Yes, so digital read is, it reads a digital input, meaning that it can only read something that is either high or low, but it cannot read 
uh, something that is uh, in between, let's say. So it's either zero or one or zero or five volts, but it cannot read 2.5. In 2.5, it would be, I don't know, undefined, let's say. In the case of the analog read, it reads something in between and it can read with certain resolution, but and it converts this into a number that we can understand. Yeah. So now we have a full setup for controlling the temperature in this room, written in Arduino. Um, before we go, just to conclude, we are gonna, <coughs> um, well, first we're gonna save it so that I can send it to you later. And I don't know if this is gonna work, but if I press here, we're gonna do the process of compilation and then in here we will upload it. I'm not gonna do this yet, but let's just see if this compiles. Well, so worked well, done compiling here. You see that there was a lot of uh, outputs in here and some things I, I encourage you to look at this if you're curious of what these things are. It's not so um, hard if uh, you keep in mind some of the things that Guillaume was talking about before and we will see tomorrow actually what all these things mean and we will try to make them happen by ourselves with the common line. But basically here we took this code we call this uh, AVR G, G++ or GCC. This is basically the compiler. It did all these operations here. GCC, what Guillaume was talking about earlier that they made for compiling the Linux kernel. This is calling this with a certain amount of uh, instructions and specifically to the chip that this thing has, which is an Atmega. I change, this should be, if I change this to another uh, microcontroller like the one that we had in here. It would be a different instruction and a different framework. I mixed it a little bit, but I think it's more or less just to get the point. And compiles with certain options, goes down, compiles the whole thing. It creates certain files, intermediate files, puts them in certain folders in my laptop. And once it's done, it's good. And then it says that this is, in this file here. So we could actually have a look at what that file is. And this is the code that we just compiled. And that is exactly the same as this thing on the left. Actually more this thing with the latest changes into something that the machine can understand and that it will be sent to the microcontroller to execute the instruction that we get. So the process of compiling is converting here, this thing on the left to this thing on the right. Yeah, and we do that going down this uh, pyramid that I was showing earlier by going from this green step here to this yellow one. Okay, so this is what we just did. Of course, the Arduino framework helps a lot. It makes things much easier. And of course, I don't think that anyone can understand this or write it yourself, but all these abstractions or all these layers of abstractions or steps in the pyramid or onions as Guillaume was mentioning before is what we're gonna try to atomize little by little during these days in in program, okay? If uh, you don't have any other question, we could close it, yeah. Uh, this is defined um, by the hardware itself. And it means that each of the pins that we have on the microcontroller would have a certain precision by definition and they will give you the value uh, based on that precision. What it means is that if, if you look in here and if we 
the, the ADCs are defined by uh, the number of bits that they can abstract. So let me go to. Yeah. So it's basically this idea, and it says my microcontroller works between zero and five volts. My ADCs will work between zero and five volts. The resolution that I have is um, 12 bits, for instance. I can put, I can allocate 12 bits to read between zero and five. So that gives me two to the 12. So 4,096 to split zero and five in all those possibilities. So I say five divided by that. And if you want in millivolts, 1.2 millivolts, because I have 12 bits to allocate and that gives me a resolution of 1.2. Is that more or less, does that answer your question? No. Ah, the, the output of the function here of uh, analog read is actually uh, an integer and is uh, um, it's a number that goes like zero, one by one to, in this case, 4,096. So if we are measuring 4,096, it means that we have five. Here it means that we have zero. If we have something in between, for instance, 2,048, it means that we have 2.5. Yeah. Does that answer the question? Uh, this is actually X. Um, um, actually, okay, this is a little bit more, we call it binary, but it's actually written in, in uh, hexadecimal. Uh, and then internally in the microcontroller, this is written into the memory, these little magnets that Guillermo was talking about before. And internally it will convert these things into a binary set of instructions. But we send it, yeah, that's another step, but we send it as hexadecimal, which basically goes between zero to F, going zero, one, two, three, four, five, et cetera, A, B, C, D, E, F. So we have, this is our, all the numbers that we can, that we can write, et cetera, et cetera. So instead of counting till 10, we count till letter F, and we have 16 possibilities here. Yeah, so we send it, encode it like that, the microcontroller reads it, or have sits inside and then it converts it into instructions that are, or some things that are registers and things like that that are binary, but we don't set it as binary on itself. Yeah. I've already took extra 20 minutes. So if you don't, I mean, it's for, for me it's fine, but Neil's class starts at two today. So please, uh, if you want to have lunch or go before, don't worry. If you have any other questions, I'm here. And uh, that's that. Um, we can finish today here the class, and tomorrow we'll see uh, each other at um, at ten thirty. Yeah? yeah. Good. I will put this code and the flowchart that we made together. I will put it in the class. Uh, I won't put the binary, but um, that's it. Yeah. Thank you.
Ok, bye bye. Bueno, tío. Esto está guay, ¿no? Bye-bye, Barcelona.